it's hard to believe that three generations ago, people came from all over the world to this isolated village to see a revolution in the making. So the anti kanish movement was start with a study club, move to credit, and get cash into people's lives, get, you know, so that they could have buy things. And then the next thing to move towards was, of course, cooperative stores and then cooperative production. Jimmy Tompkins had a vision, and people at some time didn't realize how smart he really was. Now that man came in here and thinking, how in the name of God did he ever expect that he could do anything in such a small place and with a bunch of fishermen that were uneducated and, and didn't know too much about the outside world? He gave those people the ambition. You can do it, he said. But the fisherman's achievement is only part of the story. The Antigonish plan calls for the spread of cooperative methods over the whole countryside. At the University of St. Francis Xavier in Antigonish, Dr. Cody was made head of the new extension department, founded in order to bring the university to the people. News of the success of the Antigonish movement had spread throughout the world. Cody's office was often swamped with visitors seeking advice. Cody was particularly pleased to see people from Latin America, Africa and Asia, for he felt that the cooperative movement was one answer to the multitude of economic problems in the developing nations. A few months after Cody's death in 1959, the Cody International Institute was established. Since that time, thousands of people from over a hundred nations have come to this small Nova Scotian town to study economic cooperation.